Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here in YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This is part one of two on how to make a Damascus steel knife without making Damascus steel, because that's a bit of a project. I'm going to show you how to do it all uh, much more easily, and we use a method called the stock removal method. There's Damascus steel. This is how far we get in this video. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Uh, first, let me talk a little bit about Damascus, and what it is, and uh, how it's made. And I'm going to use clay to describe it to you. And uh, the, the term Damascus steel has changed. Now it comes pretty much to represent two different types of metals either two types of steels or oftentimes a piece of steel and a piece of nickel that have been um, uh, forged together and folded over many times to form a pattern and when you use two different types of steels you can see the pattern so let's use some clay to show you what happens here so we've got here a piece of steel and a piece of nickel and we heat it up and forge it together and we have two layers and then you fold it over and now you've got four layers so you heat it up, forge them together, fold it over, and now you've got eight layers. And you can continue this process for quite a bit. And it doesn't take but I believe nine foldings and you've got a thousand layers. So it's, it's, it's kind of neat. And that's how you end up with that pattern. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it to get different patterns. And um, importantly too is after you forge and folded and forge and folded and then how you cut it also reveals different types of patterns and I'll show you that here in the clay. So you know Damascus steel, you know, the meaning of it has changed over the years uh, but this is what is commonly referred to as this. And you can buy this and that's what we're doing in this tutorial. We're going to buy a piece of uh, Damascus steel and use that to use the um, stock removal method to make a knife and uh, in this tutorial we go as far as profiling the blade so look let's cut it and take a look and imagine this as steel and nickel and that's what you would see so does that if you've seen Damascus steel that looks familiar to you and how you cut it like I said how you cut it makes a difference in, in the pattern that you get and there's a lot of different ways you can do this you can also do it by twisting the two metals together but it's tricky and it's a lot of work and it takes practice, so we, but we avoid all of that by uh, just buying a piece. So you look at that. Let's take a close look here. It is quite wonderful. There are different patterns, and they do have names like raindrop or ladder or twisted. You know, depending on the process that you use and how it's cut and what it looks like. And here, let's take a look at it. So when you see this in a knife, that's real Damascus steel in terms of how I defined it. Um, that isn't just like an etched pattern or a colorful pattern. That is the two different types of metals that are just all the way through and um, forge welded together. So it's pretty neat. You know, people do love Damascus. So here is the piece I bought. Um, and you can go to the two, my tutorial on my website if you want to check out these and how much they cost and if you want to buy some. It is nine and a half inches long, one and three quarters inches wide, and about one eighth of an inch thick. And that's uh, perfect for a nice little knife. Well, not even little, a decent sized knife. So how do we make the knife? Let's uh, get going here. I, um, so we know what size we got. I use that to trace out a bunch of, bo a bo a bunch of uh, rectangles so I know what size I've got. And then I started having some fun by uh, drawing out some sketches. What do you want your knife to look like? And the pattern I end up with, you can um, get that pattern on, my, on, the tutorial, like, on the tutorial like I mentioned if you want to make this same style and size and pattern knife. But you know, I always have fun with this part of the process because a lot of different stuff comes out. And I knew because it was we're using Damascus, I um, I didn't want it just to be an average looking knife. I wanted to have a little bit of flair to it. So I, I tinkered around with all kinds of different weird stuff. You know, different shapes and looks, even something like this. I was like, wow, it's kind of neat, but I didn't go with this. Eventually, I came out with. Um, with this, and I liked it because it's a, got a little bit of flair to it, but it isn't too crazy. Right here, there's our knife. That's what we are making in this tutorial. 
So now what do you do? Let's get to making. You're probably dying. Hey, wait, Will, let's go. Let's let's make the knife. So <laughs> there you go. Um, select carefully how you're going to, you know, lay this out because you want to see the, a really good pattern in it. So, you know, you can flip that bar around and turn it this way and turn it over and to see. So you're going to match it up well. So what I did was I traced around the profile of that drawing. So we end up with this. And that is our pattern, and that's what we're doing right now. We're going to make this out of the steel. That's the first thing you do with the stock removal method of knife making. You just cut out the outline, the silhouette of the knife. So trace that onto paper, and then cut it out. Apply some glue to it, a spray adhesive or something. And then stick that onto your bar of steel the way you want it, according to how you want the pattern to best show. Right, you want that blade to look really good. And there we go. And you know, I, I this is broken in, this is uh, like an eight minute tutorial and it's broken into a couple of parts, so just for this part. So, now depending on what tools you have, you can do this. Um, I started with a hacksaw, you know, and you cut around it the best you can. See how it's not perfect? You know, just do the best you can. We want to cut that pattern out. And you can't curve a hacksaw 100%. You can't, certain curves you're not going to be able to make. Just do the best you can. Make repeated cuts. Keep cutting at it. Keep trying. Take your time. Keep oiling the hacksaw until you've got your profile kind of cut out with some excess. And then from there, we move down to more detailed stuff. So a belt sander works good if you got one. I think this is a 4 inch belt sander, um, 80 grit I'm using, you can use 50 grit. And I'll, I'll also show you I use a little bit of a 1 inch belt sander too, but um, then you can move on to files and do some filing. Keep working at it now. And then those inner circles there on my pattern are a little bit tricky. So use whatever tools you have to, you know, to, just to get the job done. And if you've never done something like this, choose an easy knife pattern. This one's a little, get a little bit of complexity to it. So, you know, don't be afraid of this. If you ever wanted to try it, just be safe when working with tools and power tools. But it's not that hard in terms of you know, rocket science. You just uh, a few basic tools. And then to get that inside, I, I did a lot of hacksawing, I did a lot of filing, and then I finished it off with a Dremel. And there we go. See, now the knife is profiled. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of emery paper on those edges to clean them up, and that's it. So in part two, let's we're going to take one more look at it. Oh, it needs to be cleaned up, but um, in part two, we will um, finish it. We'll put the bevel on the blade and we'll do the handle and attach that. Uh, thanks for watching. Lots more stuff from our website at stormthecastle.com. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.